I know what it's like to be the other. I know what it's like to feel like I've been excluded and I don't want that for anyone. As an ally and an advocate, it's so important to make sure your voice is heard. Makeup is not just for girls, right? I think makeup brands in the last few years really, truly got under the skin of gender equity, boys wearing makeup, coloured people wearing makeup and having it in advertorial campaigns I think is amazing. Um, so you are a global, global senior vice president of DIB for Evercommerce and uh, you've been 20 years um, in this arena of the corporate world, right? And you like to spark positive change and do lots of events. You've got advisory roles and government roles. Tell me exactly, Mary, what is it that you, what do you do? What do you champion and what, 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 is, what are you about? Well, it's lovely to see you. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Um, I, well, look, simply there's something about Mary. Um, and I would like to think that in my over 20 years experience, which is sad, or I don't, depending on how you look at it, um, want to encourage and empower change. I think that that, that ultimately underpins pins everything I do. I have probably the world's longest title. I have a double barreled name like you do. Uh, I'm just Mary and I just want to navigate the many optics and nuances that create a, a and cultivate a, a culture of inclusion, uh, both in the corporate world, but also just in society. Um, and yeah, I have a number of governance roles uh, on boards and I do a bit of keynote speaking, generally mm. talking about the importance of, you know, acceptance and respect and a willingness and a want and a desire to, for us all to be change champions, just because I've got a fancy title and uh, have been mm. doing this work for a while, that doesn't mean no one else can. So that's a bit about me. Let, let's roll back to actually when I first met you first. Um, oh. I was brought in to do your makeup. That's and, right. Uh, I just want to hear from your side, you know, what did you feel about makeup? You know, how do you feel when you've, when you go to places like you like to have your glam done and that's what I love. Like you love your glam. Um, you're very good at doing your glam. Um, but tell well, me, that's like, very kind of you to say that. I would never say that because I've, I've had a glam squad. Um, when we built our home, I have a glam room in my home, um, mm -hmm. which I know you see on my Instagram, but uh, and I've had the same glam squad for 12 years and they're an integral part of who I am and who I want to be in the world. Um, mm -hmm. Makeup, I mean, I remember saying to you when we met the day before you did my glam that it's really hard for me when I am traveling, um, when people do my glam that don't know me because it's such a personal space and I immediately felt really comfortable with you. And it's been, it's been a really long time since I've had someone outside of my glam do my face because of course COVID has meant that I've not been able to leave New Zealand much in the last couple of years. Mm. So um, it was, it, it, so much can be said, you know, folks say to me all the time, my gosh, you're full of confidence and you're life of the party and you're bright and this, that and the other. I'm, I, I feel like genuinely the only reason part of me can be that I can turn up and be that person is because when I've got a set of lashes on and I got my contour down and I've got great hair, I know I can take on the world. And so makeup for me has been integral to, I believe, Mary's journey. But um, how has it changed your life? If you think back to your childhood and actually the first steps of getting into makeup, how, how has it? Um... You know, what sort of, Hugely. did you have any, you know, struggles or where did you learn? Like, you know, where was the yeah, information? Usually, I mean, I, 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 it's been my armor, you know, it's been my protection so often during the most vulnerable times in my life. And mm -hmm. it has helped me develop my own sense of identity. Um, it has very much been a part of my own particular journey, as I say. And so that's been huge for me. I, 
learned how to do makeup through my sisters who used Dove tinted moisturizer on my face when I was 12 years old. And <laughs> we just grew from there. I mean, I cannot contour to save myself. I cannot do my brows. I'm really bad. I have a lot of assistance to get this face out of bed in the morning, but I can do a basic face in my view. But yeah. I think that there is, there have been so many pockets of my life that mm. makeup has truly changed it. My wedding, um, significant milestones that have happened. I've got my 40th, as you know, my 40th birthday coming up this year and my glam team and I, are. so it's May, June at the moment. My birthday is not until August, but we're already storyboarding what my looks are going to be over the weekend of my 40th. So, you know, it's a huge, it's a huge part of, you know, um, my life. My husband is absolutely horrified at how much money I spend on glam every month, but it is, it's part and parcel of the Mary Brigade, right? So yeah, it's changed my life hugely. So it's obviously like, you know, it shows that how important it is. Um, yeah. In terms of I, inclusivity, I, I, um, yeah. what, what are like, what brands are out there that you, you absolutely love, or is there certain things that you cannot live without? I think it's, Oh, yes. As you know, I'm uh, a Mac um, Studio Fix. Um, mm. And this is not sponsored because they don't send me anything. They used to once send me free things. They don't anymore. They used to. Um, <laughs> I, I cannot live without Mac. The coverage is amazing. I love Double Wear Estee Lauder as well if mm. I'm just doing a bit of judge around the place. I think makeup brands in the last few years have really, truly got under the skin of gender equity, boys wearing makeup, colored people wearing makeup and having it in advertorial campaigns, I think is amazing. I think that there is, you know, the power of makeup being trans and also being a larger than life personality in the boardroom, right. You know, mm -hmm. commercially and corporate, yeah. but also socially that's helped me to mold a way forward for me. And I think brands that have cultivated that real true understanding of the diverse nature of who we have out in market and how they sell it to me. I suppose that in the end makeup, has whatever power people ascribe it to be. And for me, yeah. it's big. And I think for more and more people, because we're not just talking about women anymore, uh, it's a huge, big part of how advertising campaigns are launched and taken to market, which is amazing. I mean, like when you say, because you are in the corporate world, I mean, you know, how how open are they? You know, do you do you feel any different when you walk into a room or do you feel, do people, do you think people feel intimidated or anything or, you know? Um, look, I think, well, again, you've met me. I'm, I'm larger than life and tall yeah. and very bold and very direct. And I don't suffer fools. I live unapologetically, whether that's personally yeah. or professionally in the workplace. I'm me being me in the world and mm. given I'm colored and I'm trans and I've yeah. also lived in a world where by, I didn't have a glam room growing up and I didn't have a massive house and all of the things I've come from a world where I know what it's like to be the other. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to feel like I've been excluded and I don't yeah. want that for anyone uh, or an organization. So I've worked tirelessly and still do. I love my job. I love the people I work with. I'm surrounded by an amazing group of individuals uh, at Time in Evercommerce who really champion and support me. I don't have the issues I once did when I walked into the boardroom. I think people have grown up. We've got a lot more work to do. I think if yeah. every single person in, in the UK and in New Zealand and yeah. America worked in diversity and inclusion, it still wouldn't be enough. There's so much to do. And I think I'm I'm nowhere near done. In fact, I think I've yes. just begun to scratch the surface on, mm. on organisations really holding themselves to account when it comes to this work. But there's a lot of work to do, and I, I'm excited about what that could look like in the future, for sure. Oh, good. I'm glad that you – so you see it going in a good way, obviously. Everything Absolutely. Moving. I think the only way is up. You know, there's lots yeah. of areas for improving yeah. across the many dimensions that make up a diverse workforce and a society, but we're absolutely a lot better than we were. And like, you know, in the case for, for example, you and your children, your beautiful babies, mm. you want them to grow up in a world where, yeah. you know, they're not being stared at, they're not being judged, they're not being looked at. Mm. How do we make sure that we're holding their mantle for respect and acceptance? I, that's everyone's responsibility. Yeah, and what do you think is a good way, um, you know, what would you say for professionals or for people to, what can they be doing to help? 
you know, apart from education, you know, what, what, what could we yeah. be doing better? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, um, th there is a pyramid of things that you can be doing. I think the first thing, if you're an organisation, if, if you're a solo makeup artist or if you're a mm. hair salon, how are you making sure that you're representing who you have in your workplace to your customer? You know, you can't be what you can't see. And if to, in order to thrive, to survive, you need to make sure that you're representative of the community you serve. So when I say that, I mean, if I'm walking through Soho and I'm going through... Uh, wanting to go to a hair salon to get a blowout. Um, mm. And this didn't happen to me while I was in London, by the way. I had an amazing team look after my hair when I was there. But if you, and, and I couldn't see a reflection or parts of a reflection of myself mm. through looking through that window, I'm less inclined to go in there. So if you don't show that you're LGBTIQ plus savvy, you don't show that you're using pronouns in your booking system, you don't show that you're prepared to have whomever, whatever, however, walk through the door, then you're not making yourself, you're not opening yourself up. And I think that's part of the problem. Then there comes the education pillar. What are you doing to educate your staff and your customer that it's not okay to call someone the wrong pronoun? It's not okay to assume that because you're wearing a skirt, you're weird, you know, gender yeah. neutral bathrooms, you know, for those of us who have been on airplanes and, mm. you know, I know you and I travel a fair bit, it, we all use the same bathroom on a plane, hun. So there's no <laughs> difference in having that in the, you know, you can have gender neutral bathrooms in a salon. You can encourage um, your marketing and creative work to look like, you know, put it, it's, it's pride month in June in New Zealand, Australia, and America, July in the UK. Why don't you do something on your website to show your customer or your community that you support or are an ally or an advocate? I think the, the myth that, you know, the, the rainbows and the unicorns are going to come out to play when the gays turn up. Well, that's one way of looking at it, but actually as an ally and an advocate, it's so important to make sure your voice is heard. It's so important for a community that is so poorly misrepresented to have supporters. And I know you are that person. I'm not, I'm not directing this at you. I'm just saying in general yeah. terms, mm -hmm. stand up and be seen. Standing behind someone, that ain't good enough. Stand beside them. Uh, you'll get better outcomes, not only for you as an individual and an ally and advocate, but also for a community that so desperately needs more support. I love that. Um, it's really interesting. And I think it's only because like, if you say it, I, I think, you know, people o o often assume that, you know, they're doing the right thing. But actually to hear it from you, to say, you know, even just the pronouns and things, something as small as that is something that you will notice. But if we were just chatting away, we just assume it's a he and a she. And, you know, and it's only now that the, the day and everything has come into play, which is great. But like... We've got a long way to sort of educate ourselves to ensure that you know yeah, we, we are like we aware do. of it. And in fact, exactly. Actually, at the top, I normally say I don't know. It's, it's because it's very early in the morning in New Zealand at the moment when we're recording this. But normally, I would say I'm Mary Haddock Stanyland, and my pronouns are she and her. And you know, the reason I say that, Land, is not just to solidify my support for pronouns, obviously, but. I travel a lot and I stay in hotels a lot. And when I ring hotels to say, hi, I need an extra towel. Hi, I need 20 bottles of wine in the fridge. Hi, I need more flannels. Yeah. Um, I often get caught out because my voice is not, mm. you know, we're over the phone or what yeah, have you. Yeah. So I get in the habit of saying, hi, it's Mary from room. You know, it's Mary from the penthouse. My pronouns are she and her. Um, please send but, me I mean, some more. You shouldn't have to do that all the time, but I guess. It's, it's part of life. It's, it's part of how I've just had to institutionalize myself in the same way that people are institutionalized in the thinking around all of the things relating to DE and I. And that's why there's so much unlearning and mm, relearning. Yeah. We all have to do, we all have to make a conscious effort uh, to, to, to come to the party and yeah. also to be prepared to lean in and having difficult conversations. I mean, it's not okay now in 2022 to do that. And, and the easiest way for me to turn up, I wanted to cover this off. Um, so my title is DEIB, right? Diversity is a fact. So people in communities are the very way nature distinct and different. We can't change that. Hello, reception. Mm. Even if we wanted to, that ain't going to happen. Equity, that's a choice. 
equity of opportunity, equity of respect, equity of differences, that just doesn't happen magically. My God, I imagine if it did. We all tend to gravitate towards what we know. Uh, but when we do this, the other people feel excluded. Inclusion is the action, right? So once we pursue equity and that's chosen and we're all on the bridge together, holding hands, singing Kumbaya, that's yeah. where we, we make the real change. And the most important pillar, belonging, is an outcome. And for me, Lan, this mm -hmm. is by far the most important. And I'm sure... I'm sure there are many people listening to this right now, watching this, who have felt like they haven't belonged. You know, I know for me, I felt that many, many times in my personal and professional career. Yeah. And the point I'm making here is when minorities no longer have to feel gratitude for being included or where the majority have to have this conscious, oh my gosh, we've included them. Yay. Bring out the unicorns. This is a culture yeah. where minorities are simply just an integral part of the DNA of the community and societies they sit in. And that's where we need to get to. And I think makeup, I think conversations like this, that all helps. Yeah. We've got a lot of work to do and I'm, I'm so, I'm kind of blessed and, it's a blessing and a curse because of the work ahead of me that I get to do this every day. Yeah, I was about to say you uh, must get tired of having to repeat and repeat and repeat the same thing. But, you know, just a simple thing as, you know, answering the phone in the hotel. For me, it's like, it's the way I see it. It's like you've already changed that perspective of that person. So, you know, it's, a change is like one person at a time. You know, you've already changed their mindset to go, oh, next time. You know, when I when someone answers the phone, I won't just assume they're a he or whatever. You know, it's yeah, like exactly. It, and you I just think make that... people feel you know different. So I think it's quite important that you know you're doing the work. You know, we will do the work, and people listening will think twice. You know, it's things have to change, but it's not going to do overnight. But you know, yeah, exactly. And change is here. People want it. People know they. I, I want to say in order for me to go to sleep most nights, Lan, yeah. honestly, is I, people know the why they often just need to learn the how. And I mm. think that's for me, uh, amazing. That gives me hope. That gives me, um, yeah, the warm fuzzies, which is nice. Oh, brilliant. You know, what makes a great makeup artist for you? Like for, you know, like, especially, well, you say with content. Yeah, like I mean, if I talk about our time together in London, you mm. listened and you were aware and could totally within, you know, very quickly um, by the makeup I had done on myself when we first met, you could kind of get a feeling of what, what my vibe was. And yeah. um, I think so much of folks in, in glam and hair and makeup and beauty particularly the younger folks and I'm not trying to be disrespectful on your no, age but, the same age, but, yeah. but, but like don't necessarily listen you know they come to the table wanting to bring their own knife and fork and instead of picking up the knife and fork that's already on the table they're, they're interested in their own and it's that mentality whereas you're you've 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 been around girl and you, <laughs> and you know so for me, it is very much about, are you listening? Are you actually taking in what I want? Like, don't give me red lips when I, when, when you know, I want a nude or when you know, um, by looking at the definition of my brow, you're not going to go too crazy and overdo it. Cause that's just going to come out of sync with what I'm looking for, you know? So again, I'm really lucky to have the same people look after my face day in and day. Well, not every day. God, I that, Oh my goodness. That would be amazing. <laughs> if I'm going to blame every day. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to listen. I think it's also important to understand, like meet the client halfway. And and I and you totally, I didn't even need, like I think within about 10 minutes of day one of um, our time together, mm. you, I just didn't even need to worry. And and that's unusual for me because when, like I say, when I've had to use glam outside of my usual. Yeah, what, um, what makes you just want to run a mile? Or what makes you think oh, like, oh, that person is not equipped to do my face? You know, is there, you know, certain products? Because I know like when I was doing your face, obviously I did my research to know what you did like. Um, that's all part of the homework because, you know, you are a 
you know, I treat everyone the same to us, but I knew you were a speaker. I knew you did lots of events. So I looked, to, looked at all the different looks that you would do. I know you were yeah. about the big blow dry, the eyes and, you know, the lips change, but you know, skin is so important. And for me, I just wanted you to feel beautiful. But like, if, you know, any sort of key tips for anyone that's doing makeup on trans or, you know. Yeah, I think, I think that, you know, our face structure is very different to women. And if you're not used to that, um, then you need to either upskill or, or, or mm. sort of sidebar it. I know your learnings, you know, way back when you did yeah. a lot of trans and, and, and you learnt the technique and the art of shaping the face, which is incredibly important because of, you know, hormone, re let's get real about this hormone replacement therapy and the shape yeah. of the face is not as a woman's face. The bone structure is different. The jawline, I'm so lucky to have not a protruding jawline. I don't have yeah. an Adam's apple. Um, mm. And I've really taken care of my skin over the years. So I don't have, a, I don't have any blemishes or anything, but that can, that can be a confidence breaker, I would imagine. And I know, well, actually I know this from trans friends I have that have glam or have had glam where there's not enough coverage or it's blotchy or it looks like you've not taken the time to really art the face, if you like. And you, and again, I would say, as you did research the person you're going to do work on so that, you know, so that you've got a, you, you kind of not a, not that you're a footstep ahead, but that you're with them when you're having the conversation. Cause mm. let's face it, you're generally with the client for 90 minutes, honey, you got time. You don't have time to muck about. Like if you've yeah. done, if you're where you need to be with a client, you've met them halfway, boom, let's get the show on the road. I think it's also about making sure that the client is in, in, in our case, I felt comfortable really. I mean, I felt comfortable with you after meeting you. So we were ahead of it before we even started that very early morning call time at 6.45 in the bloody morning. Um, but, you know, we, I think, I think the more you can do to make the customer, the client, the person getting glam feel comfortable is important. Um, yeah, it's important. As I said earlier, makeup's such an armor for me, and I, mm. and I don't want to speak for a trans community, but I would imagine that's the case for many. And so that that would be my go. That those would be my go to takeaway tips. And I think that over the years, I looked back. I'm I'm again. I'm talking to my team about um, yeah. some of the photos that we're going to share at my 40th birthday this year. And I'm and I'm going. My goodness, did I really? really used to look like that. Like I went out <laughs> like that. Like, oh my God. And uh, you evolve, makeup, make, makeup evolves with you. And I think for me, makeup has really been not, as I've said throughout, it's an integral part and has been of my armor, but also given that I'm no expert, I just know what I like. And when yeah. I work with people like you that know that they know that I know what I know and what I like. It makes life so much easier. That's and, and also, yeah, yeah, it does, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> my God, if the world was that easy, hey, but it yeah. just is, um, yeah. I mean, hats off to the team, to, to, to my brand team and my assistant for finding you and getting you to do, getting you, uh, you were the perfect, I just said to the team when we were planning on my trip in, in, in London, make sure I have, the best makeup artist in town. And uh, I really think that they, they did good. They did good. Oh, thank you. Um, so I uh, just wanted to end it with what's the future? How do you see um, the place, the, the industry changing? Yeah, what? I mean, I'm no expert, Lynn. I, I'm so lucky um, mm. to have what I have here. I would say makeup is personal, you know, there's no wrong time to wear it. There's no way to wear it. There's no wrong style, but practically I would advise that, it, you know, it, it really is important to use good quality products and work that work with your skin. And I think that in the future, we're getting better at knowing what products are out there and what works best. It's no longer the $5 moisturizers from boots or the local chemist that's going to help you. It's, or maybe it does find the products that work for you. And I think the market is becoming penetrated with a, with a, with an heirloom of things. Um, I would also say personally get professional advice around skincare. I think it's really important to develop some skills around applying your own makeup. And I think in the future, makeup is not just for girls, right? We've got wall paint for men. I know Danny very well, and he has navigated the whole world of men makeup 
makeup as are many people. And I think um, the, the future's bright. I think, that, again, I think that it's full of hope and I think there's a, it's, it's full of brands across the pyramid of makeup and hair and beauty wanting to really listen to their customer and cater to all needs where they can. I think the future's bright for makeup and I, and I'm excited about that and I can't wait for it to continue making me look youthful as I age. (laughs) Brilliant. Oh, Mary, thank you so much for joining me. I know you're a busy, busy lady and, uh, just thank you for joining me and sharing with everybody your thoughts. And uh, yeah, that's a wrap. You're so welcome. Lovely to see you. Take care.